So tonight is Genesis chapter 8. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually and after the end of the hundred and fifty days the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month, and the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. At the end of the previous chapter, we, we left Noah and his family in the ark, and uh, it, it had rained for 40 days and 40 nights, um, and said that uh, all living things had, uh, had died, right? They had drowned in the flood. And uh, this is right at the end of 24, it says, the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. Okay, and the only 150 days is a long time. It's like five months, all right? So it's not that they just went away, you know, for a week or two, right? They were in, in the, the five months that the, the water was on the, the face of the earth. All right, so now as we begin uh, chapter 8, it's uh, now comes the next step. We need to get rid of the water, all right? That God poured all this water down and drowned everybody, and, and now he's got to get rid of the water, all right? So in the, in the, in the first verse, it says that God made a wind to pass over the earth, Right, and, and then the waters were, were blown by the wind, right, such that the water level started to, to go down. Right, so that was the first step toward getting the, the water, I guess, had to evaporate, but maybe with the wind, it evaporates faster. Okay, so obviously, if you push it from here to here, it's still, it's still you know, all around the place, but uh, the idea was it had to start to evaporate. So, with a heavy wind, it would make it evaporate faster. And in, in verse 3, it says, The waters return from off the earth continually, and after the end of 150 days, that the waters were starting to, to get beaten back, all right? And uh, now it says, in, in the seventh month, which would be, to, to be price about right, all right? Because it, it's saying the water was on the earth for about five months, it had rained for 40 days and 40 nights, so that's another month. So that now we've reached the month seven, okay? So it says, And the ark rested in the, the seventh month. On the seventh day, of the, on the mountains of Ararat, right? Now that's, that's just the, the name of a, a, you know, a mountain, but that's that's what's known as the resting place of Noah's Ark, is Mount Ararat, right? So that's a kind of a word you may hear occasionally. And that's that's, that, that's where, the, where the Ark came to, to rest, right? And the same that in verse five, finally, it says the waters decreased until the tenth month, by which time it says the tops of uh, I guess other mountains were seen that it was starting to get down to where you could start to see the tops of the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark. Noah and his family are in, in the ark, right? So, I mean, they, they, can, they can only see what they can see. You know, there's, uh, there's water, you know, I guess, as far as the eye can see, but it's not like they can see everywhere. So they're, they're wondering, when, when am I going to get out of this thing now? Okay, we've been here for, for five months and the, since the rain's ended. So let, let's, send the, let's send the birds out and see if they can find any, any dry land. So he sent out the, the raven first. Now the, the raven may not have been the best choice, is because the raven is more of a of a, a, a flesh eating kind of a bird. So you, you would expect that if they were like dead animals or when they were floating in the in the water, that the raven would be happy to just to bounce on there and uh, and eat away. So that the raven never came back. All right. So that's why that didn't really give any information. All right, because the raven just say, okay, <laughs> lunch. All right, and went went out and go ahead and. Uh, you know, and took care of itself, right? So, all right, forget the raven. Let's uh, let's try a dove, right? So he sends out the, the the dove next, and now the dove, as as it's written here, it says, you know, went out to look for a place to land. There was no place to land because wherever it flew, there was just water. So finally, it, it came back. So that means, okay, well, obviously the dry land's not really poking through yet because the dove came back. So, and then, furthermore, the dove appears to be the better bird to use for this uh, experiment. So therefore, we're going to keep using that going forward. And he stayed yet other seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off, so Noah knew that the, that the waters were abated from off the earth. 
And he stayed yet other seven days, and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seven and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dried. All right, so after the first dove came back, I right, couldn't find a place to land, so it says he waited a week. All right, and it's okay, now I've had another week to dry the water here, so let's, let's, let's try it again. All right, so he sent the, out dove number two, and uh, as you can see in uh, 11, it says that the dove came uh, in the evening, and in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So it had an olive leaf, so therefore I had to get that from something, okay? So it, it, it found some tree or something that was apparently poking above the water, right? And then perhaps even that was starting to, to grow again somewhat, right? So, okay, that, this is promising, right? It found an olive leaf, right? That doesn't mean we can go out, though, because we can't walk on top of the tree. So, but it means the water's going down and things are starting to appear now. So that, that was encouraging, right, in, in verse 11, right? So now in 12, it says we wait another week. Right, and send forth another dove, which doesn't come back. So, clearly the dove found a place to land, so I mean somewhere out there there's, there's dry land now. Right, so, they, so that's what he used the doves for, is about once a week until hopefully the third one didn't come back, and then it's okay, now there's dry land, so it means we're getting close to the end here, we'll, be able, we'll actually get out of this thing. Right, it's all fine and well, okay God, you saved our lives in this boat, now we want to get off, okay, we want to get back onto to dry land. Right, and so finally in, uh, in 13, all right, it says, uh, you know, in the 601st year of, of, of his life, all right, it says the waters were dried up, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and, and you can see dry ground, right? So, so finally the water has gone down. We have dry ground. We're going to be able to come out of the ark finally. And then 14 says the second month, the 27th day of the month, the, the, the earth was, was dry, right? And the uh, kind of the other... Uh, thing to point out here is uh, this is again one of the rare places in, in the, the Bible and certainly in the Old Testament where it's kind of specific with, with dates, right? That when Noah went in the ark, it, for whatever reason, mentioned that it was in the, like the second month of his 600th year, okay? And now it's saying they're coming out in the second month of his 601st year, so therefore you can conclude, can conclude that they were in there for a year, all right? From beginning to end, from the, they went in just before, you know, as the rain was starting. And then through the, the, the rain coming down, through the time of the flood, all, the, all this time, the water has uh, evaporated, and now it's to dry land. So a year has passed, all right? It's a year and maybe a few days have passed since that time. So that's how long they were on the ark, is just a, a little bit over a year. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth, after their kinds, went forth out of the ark. One thing that was uh, pointed out to when I was uh, studying these, these chapters is uh, I hadn't really ever thought about it until someone pointed it out to me, was that uh, the whole time that the Noah was on the ark, right, that, that God actually didn't, didn't speak to him, or at least it's not recorded that, that, that he said anything, right? That he gave the instruction, you know, to take all the animals, build the ark, go on the ark. He said when it was time to go on, they went on, they closed the door, and, and that was basically it for a year, right? So... Uh, so they wrote it out for a year, right? They, obviously, they knew what was happening because God had said it, but they, they didn't actually hear from God until now, right? And again, maybe you could conclude whether well, there was really nothing to say because, you know, they're on the ark. There's not a whole lot of options. You know, you're just going to stay put until, until you hear otherwise, until the, the rain's done, the water is evaporated. So now the, the year has passed, and now you see it says God speaks unto Noah again, say, okay, now... Get off the ark, right? Last thing he told them was go get on. Now he's telling them, okay, now it's time to, to get off. So just in case you were wondering, the, the, you know, the, the, the doves didn't tell you enough, or you look out, you see dry ground. Now it's the time to, to get off the ark, right? So as you see in the 16, it says go forth you, you're with your, your wife and your sons and your sons' wives. Okay, in 17, bring bring all of all the animals that, that you brought with you. 
okay, this way all the animals have been uh, spared so that we, we can continue all the different species, all right, so that they're all going to go, uh, go off the ark, and so, so it's 18 Noah went forth, brought, brought the, the people, 19 every beast, all right, so everything is now going off the ark, and, you know, whether it was two by two, I don't know, but, but uh, they, they all left the ark at this point, ready to resume their life on earth and, and go from there. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Upon leaving the, uh, the ark, it says Noah built an altar and uh, made the sacrifice to God, which was you know, still in practice at this point to do sacrifices. And uh, it says, notice he took of, of a clean beast and a clean fowl to offer burnt offerings. And it was considered the, the, better, the better animals because they, they were ones that you could even eat. So therefore, it was, it was a sacrifice, right? This was an animal that could have been eaten, but instead it's being sacrificed to God. So that makes it a good sacrifice as opposed to, uh, let me sacrifice some dirty old beast that I would never, never touch, right? Well, that's not much of a sacrifice. So, so sacrificing something, something worthwhile here. Okay, so, and, and in 21, now it says the Lord smelled a, a sweet savor, right? And now, I mean, it's, you know, I don't want to say that God would go, okay, yes, that smells pretty good. <laughs> but uh, the idea is that you know, he, he's recognizing that it's a good sacrifice, okay? So that's what it says when he smelled a sweet savor. You know, his, his way of smelling is different than, than, than our way of smelling. So he's, uh, he's seeing that, that uh, you know, this is a good sacrifice that Noah's making. So, so upon experiencing this, and now it says the, the Lord says, I will not again curse the ground anymore for, for man's sake. It, you know, th this is not yet the, the, the part where, you know, in the next chapter we're going to talk about uh, what, what he puts in the sky, you know, that they were never going to flood the earth again. This is not that, right? This is, if you remember when he cursed the ground, when, when Adam and Eve uh, partook of the fruit and, and they were expelled from the Garden of Eden, that uh, God told Adam that the ground is cursed, you know, for your sake, right? That you're going to have to work hard to get to get stuff to grow. And, uh, and actually, when, when Cain killed his brother, I mean, for the, especially for him, it was cursed. He, he wasn't going to get anything to grow anymore, right? So the, the ground in general had been cursed. Now he says, yeah, well, let's, let's, let's forget about that, right? He says the ground is no longer cursed, and so get and grow things, and you'll, get, you'll be able to grow things now going forward, right? And, and so... Says I'm, I'm not going to curse the ground anymore for man's sake. The understanding says that the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Right. So almost saying that it, I can see that, that people are not necessarily um, automatically righteous, automatically thinking of God. That says you know that, that when, they, when they grow from being young, they, they they have to learn. All right. They start out not knowing who God is, not being knowing what to do to serve God, but they have to be taught. Right, so it's, it's, that's why it's they're evil in their youth, if you will. All right, I mean, you know, we don't use the same phraseology. We, we think of uh, young people as being innocent, all right, but the, but I suppose you could say, well, if they don't learn the things of God, then they're going to grow up to be evil, all right? So we want them to, to learn, all right? So he's just recognizing that, yeah, but people are not going to be automatically good. And it almost sounded like he was being optimistic before that. It's like, yeah, you know, put these people here and they're, they're going to love God, serve God. And they're not. They, they do all these evil things, all right? They, they do all this evil stuff. So you just kind of recognize this is how people are that I've created, all right? This is given freedom of choice, free will. They're, they're choosing evil over good, all right? So uh, I'm just going to understand that, all right? And, and we'll work with them maybe in a different way going forward, all right? Is what I would, would take from that. So it concludes by saying, you know, so uh, I'm not going to do this kind of thing again where I smite every, every living being, all right? Because it's just. I'm going to get the earth going again with, uh, with seasons and, and everything. And which is what 22 says. It says, while the earth, earth remains, it's sea time, harvest, cold, heat, summer, winter. Right? We're going to get all the, the seasons going and uh, it'll just be more of a normal kind of life. And this is how people are. This is how they're going to operate. And uh, so they'll be the people and I'll be the God. But I'm not going to do this again where I destroy everybody and have to start over again. Right? We'll just kind of... We'll, we'll work with what we have now, right? We're not going to destroy it. No, no more do-overs, right? We're just going to work with what we have and uh, cultivate the people appropriately.